Hello, kia ora, I'm Philip Duncan, and thank you so much for joining us for our March Climate Watch update, brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and our business partnership at IBM. So we've got a lot to talk about at the moment, a lot of low pressure on the map for the first of the month. A big storm down here in the Southern Ocean, that's a sign of autumn starting to wake up. It's producing these sort of colder changes to the lower parts of Australia and New Zealand almost once a week now. Up in the tropics, very active at the moment, although La Nina is fading away, it is still technically with us probably for another couple more weeks, and then it's likely to be finally gone, but it's helping to produce these storms like Cyclone Judy that you can see up there on the map. And we've also got this other low pressure system that drove in some extra rain to Gisborne and Hawke's Bay for the end of February, causing more slips and flooding. The good news is it is finally on its way out. So there's quite a lot going on, including some big high pressure coming out of the Indian Ocean, which is actually going to be part of the driving force or controlling force for this storm keeping it away from the New Zealand area. So let's take a look at La Nina. Where are we at? This is from the Bureau of Meteorology, showing where we've been, hovering around this La Nina event, and now coming back out really into sort of a more neutral area. Neutral just basically means we don't have a big climate driver. We don't have something that's sort of pushing uh, a pattern onto us. It's a lot more chaotic. You can still have tropical cyclones, but you can also get you know southern blast from Antarctica. It's just a bit messier. So that is what we're going to likely see as we go through autumn to the start of winter. But it is worth noting, even though these lines all indicate that you're going into El Nino, uh, it's worth noting that the Bureau of Meteorology who produced this graphic uh, say that at this time of the year, the accuracy further long range isn't there as much. So don't take it quite so seriously. It's not quite as accurate as it might be appearing, but that's worth noting. But the computer data that we look at from IBM also suggests that as we go through this year, there is a drier weather pattern coming into the North Island of New Zealand and perhaps a return to wetter weather for the West Coast, more westerlies and that sort of thing. So let's take a look at the international model of models. We've got Australia in here, Europe, Japan, all the others lining up. So these are the big players out there. And so as you can see, for the month of March, they're still leaning onto that La Nina side. Certainly pulling back, but it's still on the La Nina side. Let's switch over to April, and now you notice them it's leaning more towards the El Nino side. But it's still in this neutral area. Not a lot of difference between that shift as far as our weather conditions are concerned, but it just shows you that perhaps the trajectory is that we're heading off towards an El Nino pattern, which tends to produce more high pressure zones in the Tasman, and that encourages more west to southwest winds over the New Zealand area. Let's have a look at the sea surface temperatures, part of how they measure La Nina. Normally you see a lot of red over here and a lot of blue along the equator over towards uh, America, so all the Americas. So you're certainly seeing that go back to normal in most places and the red has disappeared a lot around the Coral Sea. So conditions are heading back to normal, but look at the marine heat wave down here around the South Island and Tasmania. Take a look at the Moana project map here. So this is partly made by Met Service and Met Ocean. All the red you see here is showing marine heat wave getting up to two, three degrees above normal and around some of these coastal parts of the north. Now with Cyclone Gabriel, when that came down and it stalled in this area here around Great Barrier Island, that extra warmth certainly played a role and helping that storm perhaps get a little bit deeper and bigger as it was parked there. There were other things as well, but the warmer waters definitely has uh, plays some sort of role in making lows a little deeper if they linger long enough. And if you've got thunderstorms and downpours that bubble up in the afternoon, that coastal warmth can also trigger them to be a little bit more intense. So it does matter seeing that couple of degrees. The positive, good for swimming, it makes the sea a lot warmer. Let's have a look at the uh, forecast now, taking a look at where the air pressure systems are going to be over the next three weeks in particular. That's about as long range as it gets before it starts to get too messy. So you can certainly see Cyclone Judy up here, a significant storm, uh, category three, maybe even four. Uh, the Fiji Met Services website's been offline for a while, so a little bit hard to track it, but obviously that is gonna be tracking by in the first week, and then it comes out over this area. But the blue boxes show low pressure. So the tropics still are full of low pressure. There's high pressure coming out of the Indian Ocean, squeezing across Australia and into New Zealand. And as I said before, 
you're starting to see these autumn storms down in the Southern Ocean. And while they're well south of New Zealand, they drive in the windy westerlies over the South Island. And you see that again in week two. Windy westerlies right up across the country. High pressure further to the north. Haven't seen that in a long time. High pressure going back to the north. And that stops storms, potential storm in this area. The graphic's a little bit funny, but you can see the isobars circling up there around Fiji. So that could be the next tropical low. Tropical low pressure stuck over Australia as well, but we're seeing a stream of big highs out of the Indian Ocean around, around southern parts of Australia. But of course, these southern ocean storms that are going to increase in the months ahead as winter comes in will be producing these blasts coming in here, certainly for Victoria and Tasmania, but New Zealand's got it as well as we go into the second week, about one week from now, March 7. Now, let's move through to week three, around about the middle of the month, March 14 or 15, around then. You can see high pressure coming into the New Zealand area with southerlies on this side and low pressure all over here. So that could be a, a former cyclone or just a weak low pressure system. But either way, low pressure all up here in the tropics, another low right there and dropping down. So that means that there is still the chance of getting a tropical cyclone or tropical low pressure coming down into the North Island. It still looks as though that's a possibility, but there's also plenty of high pressure still coming in. So it's going to be, I think, a little bit more even as we go through the next few weeks, not quite as intense as it's been. Let's have a look at the rainfall, 1st of March to the 15th of March, so the first half of the month. Heavy rain returning to the West Coast. You're talking about 200 to 300 millimetres over there, which is fairly normal, actually. Take a look at the flood zones of the eastern North Island and the upper North Island. Northland, only a couple of millimetres coming for you. Uh, further down around Hawke's Bay, Gisborne, in that 15 to 25 millimetre mark. So again, that's, that's nothing too much to worry about. So that's good news. In the south, I know you need rain down here in Southland. You've got a little bit, maybe up to 40 millimetres still to come through. So I've said before, I think your drought, your dry, is going to end with death by paper cuts, just sort of downpours here and there, rather than one big rain band coming in and just fixing it for you. And no rain at all for 15 days in that big area uh, across Australia. Let's have a closer up look to New Zealand. You can certainly see that heavy rain on the west coast, further north in the more populated areas, Hokitika, Greymouth, Westport, for example, and a bit of spillover into the Nelson region. We don't talk a lot about Nelson and Marlborough. We do get a few complaints about that, but that's because your weather is very quiet. There's not a lot to talk about a lot of the time. You'll also notice a little area here around the Kapiti Coast, Horofenua area, potentially getting over 60 millimeters with some downpours there, most likely connected to this West Coast rain coming through Cook Strait. Wellington, not as wet. Wellington's only about 20 millimeters in that area. So that's the forecast for rainfall for the next couple of weeks. Let's go a little bit longer range now with IBM. Keeping it simple, here is the month of March. So what you're seeing is in the green shading, it is suggesting that still rainfall will be above normal, slightly. Not necessarily huge for everybody and perhaps leaning a little bit wetter again in this northeastern corner and the very north there and to some degree in the South Island. But even with all that rain returning to the west coast, potentially still a little bit drier than average there and remaining drier than normal in the lower part of New Zealand. We're not talking necessarily extremely dry, but just leaning a bit drier than usual. That's the month of March. Let's take a look at the next three months, the season of autumn. So not a great deal of change. Still seeing the North Island leaning a bit wetter, especially sort of this northeastern corner, which does indicate the risk of a tropical low or a subtropical rain event coming through again, not to say it's going to be a repeat of what we've had, but just saying it's still likely to be a bit wet. We're still likely to see a low pressure system at some point drive in some rain. The good news is for the first sort of 10 days of March, it does look fairly dry around these areas. And down here in the south, yeah, it does look as though you may not get sort of a huge rain event coming through to fix the dry. Now that, that's autumn. Let's zip through now July to September, the end of winter and the start of spring. IBM have now given us these extra long range maps. Now, take it with a grain of salt, don't lock it in totally, but it does give you a bit of an understanding that as we get towards the end of winter and going in towards spring, we're seeing conditions dry out a lot more around the country. That's the projection, below normal rainfall, really across the South Island 
and a big chunk of the North Island. Looks normal up there in the far north and the northern half of Northland. Potentially still a little bit wetter than average over there in some parts of Gisborne and Hawke's Bay. And that might only be 10 or 20 millimetres above average, so don't worry too much. But we're just trying to keep it simple so you can sort of see, generally speaking, where the rainmakers are most likely to be. And it does look, at least as we go into autumn, that the tropics and subtropics are still going to be active enough. And potentially also southerlies coming in here. Sometimes you forget... This isn't always due to a tropical rain event. It could be from a southerly driving in wet weather that can't really go over the hills and ranges. Soil moisture-wise, we need a break in the North Island. The National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research showing how blue the North Island is due to all the rain, and it's slid down to Kaikoura and also around Banks Peninsula as well. But it hasn't really gone right down to the very south, and we may not see a huge change in that over the coming weeks. A bit of rain in there though, that 40 millimetres hopefully does fall in the first half of the month. And finally, before I go, temperatures. This is March to May, so the season of autumn is once again leaning warmer than average overall. There'll still be cold blasts, still be the odd bit of snow and frost and all that stuff, but generally speaking, half a degree warmer than average in the north, about a degree warmer than average around Wellington, slightly over a degree warmer than average in the lower half of the South Island, and out over the Chathams, 1.3 degrees above average. That is a lot. So warmer than average conditions, the marine heat wave will be adding a little bit more to that as well. So that fact, factor that in with the uh, temperatures, that will just keep those temperatures up a little bit, especially at nighttime in the coastal areas of the country. That is all from me. We will see you again in one month from now. Thanks for all the comments on YouTube, really appreciate them. Sorry if we don't reply to every single one of them, but thanks very much for that. And of course, you can find a lot more information at ruralweather.co.nz and at weatherwatch.co.nz. We'll see you again in one month from now.